Hello, this is Julie Hogue with Vegetarians and Meat Lovers Split Table Recipes Podcast, where I talk about all kinds of food, recipes, ways to cook for split tables. So I include recipes that have meat in them and recipes without. And I have guests on. I have multiple interviews on this podcast, and I have several more lined up. I'm really excited to bring you these people. Today is going to be a podcast episode containing food and recipes that can take advantage of those summer tomatoes and basil leaves and a delve into the comfort food of fall with a mega big pan of cheesy potatoes with cornflake topping. Oh, it's so good. I made this recipe when we were up at the cabin last week and it got devoured. I mean, it was a huge vat. I call it a vat of cheesy potatoes. And we ended up eating it all. I'm like, oh, is this too much? But it was perfect. It was so good. It was so much fun. I have, we had a crazy thing happen at the cabin. So it's my aunt's cabin. They both own it. It's been in our family for like 80 years. And they're getting older and they want to sell it. So they told us to go up there one more time. And so we went up there. We brought our boat up there. And my husband was driving it from the boat launch and black smoke started to billow out of the engine. Engine, I shouldn't call it that, the motor. (laughs) And so it was alarming, of course. And so he stopped and he called me while I was driving into the store and said, you got to go back. The boat is on fire. I'm like, what? The boat is on fire? Like, oh my gosh. So I hurried back to the cabin. Luckily, I hadn't gone very far. And I was yelling to my boys to hurry up, grab the fire extinguisher because the one on the boat was dead. Of course it was dead, right? Perfect storm. It gets even more perfect. Wait till you listen to this. And so we're scrambling to get out there. We couldn't get the pontoon started. The pontoon is owned by my aunts and we couldn't get the pontoon started to go and rescue my husband. Well, when he turned it off, it started to cool down. So no actual flames happened, but there was an awful lot of black smoke. So he had his life jacket on. He was ready to jump. Finally, we got the pontoon started. We reach him and turn it off. And when we turn it back on, that motor started to alarm. The rescue boat is not supposed to die, (laughs) but it did. And so there we were. It got overheated. It wasn't, apparently it wasn't draining out the water like it's supposed to. So I had some sort of a blocked water pump tube or something. I don't know. But anyways, we sat in the middle of the lake, two boats dead, nobody around because it was a Monday morning. We sat there and we sat there and we sat there baking in the sun because we had no sunscreen because, of course, we rushed off because there was a boat fire and we had no water. So finally, we're like, what are we going to do? There is nobody around. We can't. There wasn't even anybody driving by to try and catch their attention. So we had to call 911, (laughs) not emergency. And they said, "Okay, we'll come get you. There's a boat in the water. The sheriffs will hop in the boat and come tow you to shore. And... So we waited and waited, and finally they showed up. There were a few boats that were starting to appear, but nobody was noticing us or noticing that we had a problem. Even, you know, waving is just waving at that point. It didn't look like we had a problem. It just looked like we were hanging out in the middle of the lake. So the sheriff towed our boat to the landing. We put it back on the trailer, which is probably a a blown gasket, so the motor might be completely shot. And then they towed the pontoon back to the cabin. So we were up there, no boat to use two boats, but we couldn't use either of them on a lake. (laughs) Not exactly what we expected. We thought we were going to be using the boat a ton. So we rented a pontoon for one day and then they fished off the dock. We still had fun, but what a story, right? The the rescue boat isn't supposed to die. (laughs) Hope you're having a great summer. Okay, now we'll get into the recipes. I had to tell that story because it's a total crazy story. Just the odds of having two boats die in the middle of a, a lake. Uh, you know, what are the odds of that? (laughs) We should have played the lottery, right? Okay, this first recipe is called Caprizi Pasta Salad. And I like to use the tricolor rotini pasta. You could use those pastas that have veggies baked into the, the pasta. Those are really great to use too. Oh, before I forget, my cookbook is free today. It's free for 
until Sunday at midnight. Forgot to say that. It's totally free. One Dish, Two Diets. I'll put the link down in the podcast show notes and you can get my cookbook for free. Please leave me a review if you get it and enjoy it. I would love to hear your thoughts and enjoy. Okay, so you take 12 ounces of the tricolor rotini pasta, cooked and drained, and then you're going to add three cups of the sliced cultivar tomatoes. Now, those are the multicolored tomatoes that are red, orange, and yellow. Or if you have garden tomatoes or access to garden tomatoes or a you know, farm stand, use those because the fresh tomatoes that are homegrown or grown locally in a farm are just the absolute best. I like the multicolored ones for the salad because it makes it look really pretty, but you know, Taste is most important. So if you grow your own, if you live near a stand, take advantage of that this summer and get those tomatoes. So, okay, we'll start over. 12 ounces tricolor rotini pasta, cooked and drained, three cups sliced tomatoes. And then you're going to mix together one fourth cup olive oil and one fourth cup balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of dried basil leaves. Eight ounces of the fresh mozzarella cut up and two cups of fresh basil leaves, small or cut up if they're big. And that's it. And then you stir it all together. It's super yummy. I love that fresh mozzarella with the tomato and the basil. So good. A great way to make a caprese pasta salad because all you're really doing is you're you're adding in the pasta to make it a little bit heartier. You know, it's not just the tomatoes and the vinegar, and the oil, and the basil, and the mozzarella. But it's so great because it's such a delicious flavor. And it makes it a little bit more hearty when you add in the pasta rather than not having the pasta there. It just has another flavor, another way to enjoy that kind of caprese flavor. And it's so good. (laughs) And next, I'm going to talk about how I made the big pan of cheesy potatoes. Now, I've made a couple of different versions of this one. And the amount of potatoes, hash browns, isn't totally imperative. I have made it with different brands before, and sometimes there are a little different amounts. So it, it, don't stress too much if you don't have the exact size or poundage or weight, I guess, of the potatoes that I say, because it's still good. And I've done it different ways where I use different amounts of the hash brown potatoes. You do have to thaw them out. So I usually plan ahead and either pull them out and put them on the counter or you can pull them out the day before and put them in the fridge if you want them to thaw that way. It does take a little while for them to thaw, but it definitely happens. And then so you're going to take a big bowl because you're going to be stirring this. You're going to need a big bowl. You could cut this in half if you don't want to make it this big, but but I call it the big pan of cheesy potatoes because it's so good. It's such a comfort food and it's just delicious. And what's so yummy about it is it is so good leftover too. Like it's not, it doesn't like lose anything. It's still good as a leftover. When you heat it up, it's delicious. Okay, so how many do you need? About three pounds and four ounces of the frozen shredded hash browns thawed out. So again, I've done different amounts of those, but three pounds, four ounces has been a good amount for me. And then two cans of cream of potato soup, two sticks of melted butter divided into one half cup and one half cup. I have made it with more butter too. It's really good, but um, then it's like really super fattening. Like, <laughs> So I like to do the, the two sticks of butter where you're divided half and half and four cups of shredded sharp cheddar cheese, salt and pepper to taste, and about two cups of cornflakes. So the cornflakes are going to get added last, so don't mix those in. What you're going to do is you're going to combine those thawed hash brown potatoes, two cans of soup, one stick of butter, and four cups of the shredded cheese, and you're going to stir and mash it until it's fully mixed. And I like to actually stir it with like a fork or a big fork to kind of break up that soup and the cheese and just get it all really mixed well. I actually feel like it does better than a spoon, maybe a slotted spoon, but it kind of, I don't know, I just feel like it it mixes it up a lot better. And so then you're going to do that and you're going to press it evenly into a 9 by 13 inch deep pan or bigger if you have more hash browns and it doesn't fit, you can go bigger. Sprinkle it with salt and pepper as desired. Bake at 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. It could be longer if your oven cooks slower. So make sure you do that. You want to be like kind of getting golden on top and make it look like it's done. And then you're going to melt the second stick of butter, 
add the cornflakes and then sprinkle the cornflakes all over the top. And then you're going to pour that other butter over the cornflakes and bake it for five minutes more. You wouldn't have to do that baking part a couple of times. I've actually forgot to do that part. And it's still really good. Pour that butter over those cornflakes and it's just delicious. What's really good about this particular recipe is the medallions, my son calls it medallions, <laughs> of the cream of potato soup adds a different layer and type and nuance of potato in mixed with this. And he he's like, I love those medallion potatoes mixed in with this. And it really is good. I mean, you could use other cream of cream of soups like cream of mushroom or cream of celery or something, but the cream of potato is really good cuz it I like I'm I'm with him. I like the medallion type of potatoes mixed in there too. It's just really really good. And it just adds a layer of yumminess to it. This is a great recipe for fall when you're looking for comfort food. And I guess it's August, so I'm starting to think about fall a little bit. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with fall because in Minnesota, it starts to get cold, but it's not cold yet. I just love summer so much and the freedom of summer. But I love all fall things too, but I don't know. Summer's my favorite, so it's kind of like I hate to see it come, but... There's some good parts to it, too. All the food, the holidays are getting closer, all of the different recipes you make. I tend to make chili and stuff like that. And this is a perfect recipe for comfort food. Also in the winter, too, like cheesy potatoes. I don't know, year-round cheesy potatoes. Can't go wrong with <laughs> cheesy potatoes. And I've fed this to other people, too, and they're like, wow, that is really good. It's so simple. And actually, both these recipes today are really quite simple recipes. And I like simple. You know, I, I love to cook gourmet, but, you know, I am so busy. I don't know about you guys, but I work way more than full time. I have got several podcasts. I write multiple things. I write books under two different names. I am busy. I, <laughs> I'm an editor for On Medium. I'm just doing all kinds of things. And then we've got the kids, of course, and the pets and all these things to take care of. I need easy stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I need easy recipes. And these are simple and good. And they're homemade. That's the other great thing too. It's like, sometimes I feel like homemade things just take so much time. But when it's so, these recipes, they don't take a lot of time. And yet they are still homemade. And both are pretty good leftover, like the salad, the salad I just gave you the recipe for. The balsamic vinegar and the oil, it just makes all that stuff kind of preserved a little bit because you know how tomatoes start to break down after they've been cut like a day after or so they start to break down they're just not as good they're just kind of like weird consistency like when we've sliced, sliced up a tomato for burgers or sandwiches the next day they're just not quite right unless they have something on them then they seem to be fine like in a pasta salad they seem to be just fine there's some sort of protection I think with the preservative with the vinegar probably the oil it just it doesn't make them break down like that. But when they're just sliced and left alone, not so good. <laughs> Maybe squirt them with lemon juice is what I need to do or lime juice just to get them to preserve and, and not do that breakdown thing where they're not so good. But I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to make it a short little episode this time. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. We're all busy, right? <laughs> we like short things sometimes. I like short things sometimes too, you know, it doesn't have to be a super long podcast episode to be enjoyable. What you want is the recipes and I got them for you. They're so good. I hope you try them. Try them out and let me know. I would love to know your thoughts about how they are and if you like them and stay tuned for my upcoming podcast coming up. I'm really, really excited about some of the people I've been talking to who are cookbook authors and chefs who are going to come on the podcast. And I'm so excited to talk with them and present them to you to the world. And just so much fun to talk to these experts on how to cook and what they do and their experiences. And then we get a little bit of their life off and their life story in it too, which I think is just fantastic. You know, the last one, did you ever, did you listen to the one where rags to riches? Oh, that was such an amazing an amazing story. You've got to go back and listen to that one. Her story is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm just so amazed and so happy for her that she's gotten to where she is in her life now because of all the hardships she had. And she persevered. She kept going and she has made a business for herself. 
just absolutely amazing. An amazing drive, an amazing woman, an amazing story. Check it out. She's just absolutely amazing. (laughs) And her name is Mary Audette White, the Restless Chipotle. So check for that. Absolutely amazing. The, The title of the podcast episode is The Rags to Riches, Journey to Success of food blogger and best-selling cookbook author, Mary Audette White, Restless Chipotle. And that's that's her name on social media. So check her out. It's such an amazing story. Thank you so much for listening to this. And I hope you're having an amazing, yummy weekend. I hope you're enjoying your food and having some great times and wonderful conversation and making great memories over your food. Because Food does that. It has memories for us. And when we remake it again, we remember those memories, good or bad, right? But hopefully we can focus on the good. I hope you have an amazing day. And thanks again for listening to this podcast. I love it that you're here. And please follow my podcast if you want some more recipes and some more amazing interviews. And give me a rating. Give me a review. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for listening. And you have an amazing day. Bye-bye now. Oh, 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 oh,